it's interesting. The views on my videos have been uh, underreported for some reason. YouTube uh, sent me a message in my analytics in the account in the an analytics, and I took a screenshot of this and sent it uh, to some people for review. And it shows that uh, they're underreporting on my videos, but they didn't give me an explanation whether it's a technical issue, a personal issue, or a uh, conspir conspiratorial issue, or underhanded issue. But in any case, I've talked about this before, like uh, YouTube policy, YouTube policy um, has been shown not to be consistent in a lot of ways, and uh, prioritizing certain uh, videos and, and, and having some bias, well, Guess what? I think this is normal in any private organization, so I don't take it personally, right? I've said before that uh, I'd prefer to create my own YouTube or create a platform where uh, people who want to talk about the subjects that we talk about in Buddhism, where it can be, um, we can talk openly and not be afraid of saying words or uh, not be afraid of having discussions that uh, are not politically correct or that are not socially popular in this uh, wacky world that we live in. Now, I don't think any of you who are, who are subscribed to my channel uh, are surprised that uh, a lot of things we say in Buddhism, a lot of Buddhist teachings are controversial in the world. They always have been. Buddha has always had protagonists who try to uh, railroad the teaching. They try to counterfeit the teachings. They use the teaching and don't quote that it comes from the Lord Buddha. We see that regularly even today, but it's been a long time uh, since the Buddha has uh, left this world in the flesh and these things that happen on these social platforms are one of the reasons and one of the main reasons why I would prefer to just post videos and uh, have like a social content for Buddhism in one site and so we can control it ourselves and, and, and maneuver it ourselves and I've already given the update uh, two videos ago on this so please uh, watch that video so it just concerns me that uh, YouTube would send a message saying that uh, videos are underreported the video views are underreported however not disclosing a reason right so this is what goes on in the world uh, and I think that the subjects I talk about probably touch um, even being a, a very small channel, um, not having many subscribers, not having many views in general, maybe it's affected, maybe the things that I'm talking about are affecting the powers that be. Now we know, now we know power in itself, right, is uh, quite uh, a tempting, seducing thing to have a lot of power over people and control empires have come empires have gone empires keep being reborn uh, you know, domination by force all these things are part of this world which the buddha talks about clearly as being dukkha now one of the main reasons a lot of these things occur is because of wrong views wrong views the buddha declared a long time ago, I just sent a newsletter out discussing this briefly, but uh, I think I will expand here. That the Buddha declared a long time ago that wrong views are the cause of downfall, wrong views are the cause of evil, wrong views are the cause of being reborn in the plane of woes. Now consider this... Uh, Carefully, dear seekers, dear summoners, 
wrong views, right? So we're talking about creating a better world. We talk about living a a great life, a successful life, right? Or a life uh, full of happiness and joy. But we deter to undertake what is necessary to cultivate and develop the right factors in order to have the right successful life according to Dhamma. Now this is a big problem we a lot of us have because the problem is no matter what you do, right, if the views that you have, right, that you possess, the perceptions you possess, the views of the world are incorrect. They're not correct. They're not samma, samadipi. This is going to cause a lot of problems for you and those around you. Now we see this. We see this every day in tragedy, tra- you know, it, tragedies and, and things when, when someone does something violent or something careless uh, to other people. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible, for, it's horrible to watch. It's horrible to experience. It's horrible to, to witness, right? Uh, and it lasts for a long time. Now, in this world, we have tended to look away when evil is uh, occurring, particularly genocide, uh, murder of innocent people, um, wars, unjust wars, which I think are all unjust. And as I've said always, is I don't think it can be disputed. Wars are just failure. Like people think. Uh, I've heard people think that wars are just part of life. Violence is part of life. Yeah, I don't disagree with that statement. However, when we're following the Buddhist teachings, when we're trying to cultivate and develop ourselves, we need to understand that it, it still is based on wrong view. right? And all wars are based on wrong views. They all are. Right? Killing is wrong view in a lot of ways. It's morally incorrect, and it only causes pain, more suffering, uh, more resentment in oneself and others when this kind of behavior goes on. And so to attain wisdom, to attain great outcomes, to attain the bright mind, to as the Buddha said, this mind is luminous, monks. The Buddha was talking about the mind being luminous. But how many people actually experience the luminous, bright mind? And when the Buddha was uh, setting the will of Dharma in motion, he's talking about that wisdom arose, light arose, knowing arose, seeing arose, right? But it's really interesting, he talks about the light, the luminous light arose. Right? Now, how many of you have experienced the luminous light of your mind? Right? Now, the question I'm asking you is what kind of effort are you putting into this? Because there's eight factors uh, in this uh, cultivation and development. And these eight factors are not as simple as they may seem to. Most of us have to do it tough because of our past, because of our situations. And, and even the Buddha had to struggle immensely before realizing the Four Noble Truths and realizing the release of Dukkha. Right? So great effort. Great effort leads to great outcomes. And I'm, I'm going to go one step further here and say that great right effort, great samma, samma effort, samma ajivo, that great right effort leads to great outcomes for oneself. So if you put in mundane effort in what you're doing, I guess the equation would equal mundane outcomes. Now, Whatever situation 
you're in, my friends. Uh, I just see in these last few weeks, there's been a lot of deaths here at the temple. I've had to attend many funerals. Um, I've been hearing a lot of tragic news from different people lately, uh, more than normal, more than usual. So when this occurs, it always makes me reflect on life focus, life direction, life purpose. And why is it, even I ask myself, is why, do tra why does tragedy and extreme situations always bring the Dharma or the reflection of the Dharma to the to, you know, center? It's because it's only usually when things are going bad or not good that we pray to God or reach out or try to change ourselves, not when things are going so-called good. Now, so-called good, now let's talk about this, right? So, if the mind is imbued with wrong views, if the mind is not luminous, right? If one is not experiencing the luminous mind and one is experiencing the dark mind. So, one, one simple way to work it out is when you, when you sit down and practice concentration, do you see, do you experience the luminous mind? Now, don't trick yourself. Don't imagine. It's not just lights going off and you know, visual visuals you see through the eyes. Do you experience the chitta being luminous? Well, I would say not. I would say that usually someone who's attained a certain level of uh, concentration, uh, I would say uh, development, or has attained some of the, the noble paths and fruits, gets to see this, right? And obviously the arahant, the one who's awakened, right? So when we talk about things are going good in life, Right, but your mind is imbued with darkness. Your mind is not knowing. Your mind is embedded with wrong view. I would say that your life is not going good, and I think you need to be told because I think it's skillful. It's interesting because you know a sad event for example when someone decides to take their own life it's sad it's tragic for that person and for everybody around them they have to clean up the body clean up after this person as well and this is just a tragic and sad event and fortunately i've attended some funerals of people and families and it is a daily occurrence in this world which makes it hard as a monk and as a man to try to find pleasure outside of this sometimes because Reality is reality. Reality is reality. But because we have media, we have enjoyment, entertainment, and pleasure-filled activities, it takes us away from what's really going on in this world, from what's really going on in our life, that we are on a limited time budget, on a one-way ticket, that we don't have much time. And where is the next destination? Where will, where, where, will, where will the mind's destinations be after this life? Now in Buddhism, the Lord Buddha has warned us not to uh, engage too much in, uh, 
the pleasures of the flesh. And I'm not just talking about the obvious one. There are many. There's visual effects, there's heat, there's sounds, there's, there's tangibles, materials, there's food, right? And there's also addiction to certain th substances and addictions to certain behaviors that are not skillful. Now, these serious talks are needed frequently because when you, most people, or all, I would say all people, when it comes down to it, when things hit the fan, when things go wrong, okay, it's at that point that your cultivation and development is what you land on. So what you got, your, your actions, your past actions, the, what you've worked on throughout your whole life, that's what you land on. That's all you got. So if you're not landing on a bed of wisdom, if your mattress is not wisdom, if your mat mattress is not a bright, luminous mind, right? if your mattress is not a mind imbued with the right view, with Samma, right? with Samma Ditti, at least, at, at least, then what you're landing in, what you're landing on is the mattress of darkness, the pit of what the, the pit of woe. You're landing in the in the era of darkness. And it's at this time you will experience a lot of lamentation, pain, suffering, distress. Now I don't wish this upon anybody, but this is just how it goes. This is how it goes. In the teaching of the Buddha, the Buddha talks about very clearly Sama and Micha, right? Sama and Micha, which is right and wrong. He makes no qualms. It's very clear. Right and wrong exist. So the focus of your life or our lives is this life will end. What happens next? Do you know? And this is the big question, isn't it? Now, because uh, I don't joke around too much, um, I guess my videos are not very light-hearted. Um, you might have to go to another channel for that or go talk to a different monk for that kind of thing. Uh, I have a different approach. Or I, would say a per I would say my approach, the, well, the, the person that's here, right? The approach I have is quite serious because of the experiences I've had in life, the mistakes I've made, and I think that upon great reflection, deep reflection, I'm no different to anybody else. I mean, I don't like to be deceived. I don't like people committing violence on me, don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy uh, dis being disrespected and being stolen from, told lies to. I think that makes me normal like every other human being. I think you're just the same as I am in that sense. I have a, I have a limited amount of time on this earth just like you. I experience hunger just like you. I have people in my family that are going through hard times, going through good times, just like you. I have loved ones, I have friends, just like you. The problem is, just like you, not awakened. But the good news is, right, as the Buddha has declared, is that there's the Four Noble Truths. There is a way out. Like in the in the connected discourses, in the Samyutta Nikaya, there's uh, 
there's a quick dharma there that the Buddha talks about gratification, danger, and escape. I reflect on this uh, little teaching, little big teaching regularly. We need to be careful. Sometimes the gratification of pleasure of the senses. Now again, I'm not just talking about that one subject that seems to always pervade everything in this world. It sends people mad. However, there are many sensual pleasures and the Buddha, talk, the Buddha talks about Adukka Masukka, right? Bentuk is uh, that duk, that pleasure is also dukkha. That pleasure is also stressful. And there's reasons because of that. One is because, first of all, it's impermanent. It's fleeting, right? If you look at, for example, any pleasurable experience, there's probably been a lot of things in the background that happen before that occurs. And then when it occurs, it's very quick. This in itself, it's kind of an elevation and then a dump. And as uh, an eloquent uh, senior monk used to say to me, particularly when I was a layman, was be careful of the ecstasy and then the agony. Right? So these are quite serious statements and this video is quite a serious one. It's only because uh, in these last few days, um, I've had people that I know that are dear to me um, pass away, um, and it's thrown me in a bit of a loop, and I thought I'd express this and share this today. Right? But I think it's important, though, to understand. It's kind of like uh, I remember an experience uh, before, I, before I ordained in this life, that uh, there was a uh, patient of mine who was just told they had uh, two months to live, right? Or three months to live, if I can remember clearly. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. Anyway, this particular patient had a really uh, deep and profound effect on me at that time and uh, is one of the causes of why I ordained, to tell you the truth. Because this patient, when I started to uh, apply acupuncture on this patient, this patient grabbed me so, so aggressively by the arm and started to uh, cry, started to whine, started to... Um, yell and scream and and I mean nothing violent or not not in that sense but but grabbed me so aggressively in a way of reaching out for help she wanted me to help her and there was very little I could do and one of the things that struck me the most about this person was she said that her life was not well lived. Now, two definitions here. There's well lived in, I guess, the, the normal standard societal view, which is you know, study well, have success, work hard, etc., etc., all that kind of stuff in the conditional framework and there's the definition of well-lived in Dharma, well-lived in Dharma. What does this mean? It means cultivating and developing all the eight factors of the Noble Eightfold Path. It means be living and behaving in line with morality in line with Dharma, in teaching at all times. Now let me ask you, what is better? What is better? A poor person, a rich person, with luminous mind, with right views, 
with wisdom totally, totally released, right? Or a person that's rich or poor or in the middle with a mind in, imbued in darkness, in uh, wrong view. Now I think, now, the Buddha speaks loud and clear which ones, it's obvious which one's better, and it's obvious which one should be prior, prioritized and focused on in our lives. Now if you go even deeper, how skillful do you think a dark mind is to yourself and others? And looking at it, I guess, from a, another point of view, is how skillful is wisdom, a luminous mind, imbued with right views, fully cultivated and fully developed, fully released from dukkha. How useful is that to oneself and others? Now, it's very clear which one's better. So I urge you to focus on this more. Now, the amount of people that uh, I talked to over the years, I've talked to over the years, and the amount of poverty I see and problems that I see. I see the problems because most people come to monks when they've got problems. And I'm not just talking about myself. I'm talking about the senior monks here. They're constantly bombarded by lay people going through things. They're constantly bombarded from younger monks expressing their problems. Yeah. I talk to senior monks all the time about my issues and my difficulties. They have to listen and they have to help. And the same goes for me. Now, of course, I'm not a very senior monk, so I don't have the full, the full, uh, I guess, brunt, like a senior monk would have, or the leader of a community. Now, I only imagine someone like the Buddha, for example, right? So many people came to the Buddha looking for help, asking for help, or asking for a clear explanation or clear direction, right? And when you're in these positions, it's very hard to look for pleasure or look for things outside of it because you're seeing reality all the time. You see reality all the time. And see, in Buddhism, it's not about, or as far as I know, when I say in Buddhism, I guess I've got to be careful there because I don't want to uh, make sweeping statements that I'm the authority or anything like that. So apologies, right? But sometimes with words and some statements and some expressions, it's, it's, it's not intended, I'm not intending to talk like that, but it can be perceived that way, so I want to clear it up first. But in any case, when we're discussing with people about their lives, this is a serious thing. And so, for me, I take your heart and your mind seriously. And when I do these videos, and when I talk on these videos, and have discussions on these videos, I respect you 100%. And I wish good for you. And this is why I am not going to lead you down the garden path or talk about things that lead people or lead one down the garden path, nor lead myself down the garden path. There is a point in life which I think most people will reach at some point where you're going to have to choose wrong or right. Now, why wait for that point? Why wait for that point? Now, I hope you're understanding my message and I hope I'm expressing myself clearly on these videos and why I'm doing them. I have a serious message. You know, 
I have a serious uh, devotion to this practice. I have a serious devotion to my welfare and to the welfare of others. And one thing I've realized that the faults in me, the shortcomings in me, have to be developed and cultivated so I can be more useful or useful to myself and others around me. Are you ready to reflect on yourself deeply and honestly? Are you ready or do you want to or do you see the sense in being honest to yourself? And then you will see the Buddha, you will see the teaching and why it's there and why it's necessary and why it's necessary to engage great effort and diligence with your behavior, with your actions, in everything you do, because there really isn't any other way. Scary. But when you look at it, when you look at it clearly, the opposite of wisdom is ignorance. This doesn't give you a choice. It's either you're ignorant or you have wisdom. Really no in between. I mean, gradual process, I guess, gradual awakening, sure. But full attainment is full attainment and it's the best there is. I don't see any choice in that. And that's why when we start to study Dhamma, or we start to study the Buddhist teachings, very hard to turn back. You cannot turn back. I think it's impossible in a lot of ways. Well, I'm not trying to be absolute or authoritarian here, but I will be pragmatic. I'm not afraid of being pragmatic here because the Buddha did call people fools. The Buddha was not a scared or fearful or timid person in any way. In fact, the strongest. What can we learn from the Great One is that if there's no wisdom, what do you have? If there's no wisdom, what can you do? Very little. It's just a matter of seeing it. It's a matter of understanding it matter of comprehending it on reflecting once you reflect deep enough you'll see it i'm no different to you i'm no different to any other person the same issues just different levels situations unique in different ways but we're, we're unique and we're different and we're the same in a lot of ways complex not so simple, right? However, I do wish you uh, a great reflection after this video and after this discussion that you start to understand, right? That you start to understand that your focus, your central focus should always be in line with Dhamma. It is the only thing, right, that will take you to a better place. In my opinion, according to the Lord Buddha, according to the Savaka Arahants, according to the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, right? And it's very easy to align or misalign this with the first one, Samaditi, right? Right view, right view. Now, if there's not right view, there's wrong view. See, there's no choice. There's no choice. If it's not right view, it's wrong view. There's no middle view here. Although we're talking about the middle way. Well, what, it, what exactly is the middle way? All right? 
it's not laziness. Briefly explained by the Buddha, it's not lazy and being slothful and, and going full on into pleasure, right? Okay, that's one extreme. The other extreme is torturous. And we're also talking about torturous in terms of emotions, being really deeply depressed or upset or sad. That's an extreme as well, finding that middle way between the extremes. But most importantly, not clinging to the five aggregates, seeing that uh, life, experience, death is impermanent, the body is not self, your feelings are not self, things like this, right? But wrong view is wrong view. There is no choice here, right? And right view takes you up and away, and wrong view takes you down and out and into the pit, right? Now, when you look at it in all facets of life, right? whenever you're working on anything, there is a right way to do things. And there's a wrong way to do things. It can't be denied. Try picking up a trade and you'll learn very quickly there is a right and wrong way to do things. Pick up a knife and try to cut anything, right? With carelessness, for example. So, it's not a, it's you'll find out very quickly, right? <laughs> that it's the not not the right way to do it, right? There's a right way to cut things, right? This this is this dharma. See, dharma can't you can't escape dharma. It's dharma is in small things. Middle things in large things. It all cuts the same. The right and wrong path, the middle way, 